Hello everyone! It seems like only yesterday uh, Magnus Carlsen and Sergei Karakin were battling it out in New York uh, for the title of the world champion and uh, already we have a list of eight names that will be the participants of the candidates tournament in 2018. Uh, the 2018 candidates tournament will be held in Germany in Berlin uh, in March and uh, the players that will be participating are Sergei Karakin, who immediately had the invitation since he was the challenger uh, in the previous uh, championship. Uh, we have uh, Levan Aranyan and Ding Liren, who uh, won, their, won their invitation by placing number one uh, in one of the two top spots uh, in the World Cup. Then we have uh, Mamedyarov and Grishchuk, uh, who won their invitation by uh, uh, claiming best players in the Grand Prix series organized by FIDE. Uh, then we have Wesley So and Fabiano Caruana uh, who were invited due to their uh, rating, well, due to their average rating uh, during the entire 2017. And we have the wild card uh, who was given to Vladimir Kramnik. And a lot of people are saying that uh, although Kramnik is an amazing player, I, you know, nobody disagrees with that, but a lot of people uh, are thinking that maybe, maybe Maxime Vacher Lagrave should have gotten the wild card. As uh, the wild card is given by the organizers, by Aegon, and. Um, uh, the only the only real criteria you have to fulfill is that uh, any time uh, during the 2017 you have to have a rating uh, higher than 2725. So I, I haven't really studied this matter a lot, uh, you know. So those of you who have, I'm very interested. Uh, do you agree with the decision that Kramnik got the wild card, or would you maybe prefer that uh, Maxim uh, got the wild card? Uh, either way, we're going to have a very interesting uh, candidate series and uh, I'm, I'm very eager to see who will be able, uh, if Levin can continue his uh, onslaught he, he's been doing for, uh, for the whole year now, uh, or will, will someone else maybe, maybe take the lead. Uh, but uh, I decided to show a, a Maxime game and I decided to show you a game it was played uh, in Norway chess in uh, it was uh, Magnus Carlsen won the event and uh, this game uh, Maxim Vashir Lagrav is playing against Anish Giri with the black pieces. And of course we have a most interesting opening, uh, the Sicilian, as Maxim Vashir Lagrav is known as a, as a Sicilian specialist, especially the Nidorf. So let's see the game. Giri has the white pieces and he plays e4. c5, knight to f3, d6, uh, d4, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and knight to f6. Knight to c3 and a6. Uh, Maxim goes for the Nidorf variation. Bishop to g5, e6, we have f4, h6 now, uh, bishop to h4, and queen to b6. Uh, a3 by Giri, and uh, bishop to e7. Uh, probably already everyone knows, but uh, just in case someone doesn't, you can't capture the b2 pawn because knight to a4 uh, and your queen is trapped. So after a3, Maxine goes for bishop to e7, uh, we have bishop to f2, now threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries with the knight. Uh, queen to c7, getting the queen out of the way, uh, queen to f3, uh, knight b to d7, and uh, a queenside castle by Giri. Uh, b5, uh, Maxim is now expanding on the queenside, is ready to attack the castled king. Uh, g4, Giri does the same on the king side, and uh, the immediate g5 by Maxim. Uh, h4 by Giri, and g captures on f4. And uh, this, is a, this is a very unusual position, as Giri plays a bishop to e2. Uh, you know, uh, he could have gone for g5, and uh, what what we have after g5 is something like knight to e5, uh, queen captures on f4, and after knight g6 with a tempo on the queen, queen to f3, knight e5, queen f4, knight g6, and uh, a possible draw by repetition was here in the position, and it's uh, it's very peculiar. Giri decided not to go for this, uh, but okay, instead after g captures on f4, bishop to e2 by Giri. And rook to g8. Now, Maxim is stopping g5. Uh, rook d to g1. Again, Giri is preparing g5. And now d5. Uh, Maxim uh, expanded on the queen side, and now he wants to break open the center, even though his king is still on e8. Uh, e captures on d5, and we have knight to e5. Uh, although, in this position, uh, again, g5 was a possibility, but Giri decides not to go for it. E captures on d5. We have knight, knight to e5 with a tempo on the queen. Uh, queen to h3, and now e captures on d5. And now uh, Giri uh, transfers the rook from g1 to e1, as uh, the, the position now opened up, uh, Maxim's king is still on e8, so Giri would definitely enjoy a rook on an open file. Uh, Maxim uh, gets rid of this by simply playing king to f8, 
And although it's uh, quite an open position, uh, Maxim does have a pretty open king on f8, but the, the king is actually very safe there, as you'll see. Uh, knight to f5 by Giri, threatening the bishop and threatening to capture the h6 pawn. Uh, Maxim captures it, bishop captures on f5, g captures on f5, and bishop to c5 now. Uh, Giri plays queen to f1. Uh, capturing the bishop doesn't really relieve white of any problems, as after queen captures, again, Maxim is threatening d4, d3. It, it would be pretty much the same as what happens in the game. After bishop to c5, queen to f1 was played. And now d4, uh, kicking the knight away from c3. We have knight to b1 by Giri, and knight to e4. And this is a, a, very, a very hard position to play for Giri. <laughs> there are a, a lot of moves uh, are threatened here. D3 is uh, always a possibility you have to calculate. Uh, so we have bishop to f3. Now Giri pins this knight on e4, uh, but uh, Maxim doesn't mind. Maxim plays knight captures on f2. And uh, what do you do here? Well, Giri decides uh, to accept the challenge, or, although declining it doesn't really uh, help white in this position. Giri plays bishop captures on a8. Uh, and here Maxim has a, a beautiful, beautiful strike. Uh, he plays knight e to d3 with check. And what do you do here? Well, Giri played king to d2, and this is in fact the best move. Uh, the knight unfortunately can't be captured. If you play c captures on d3, uh, you get bishop captures on a3. Now opening up a discovered check from the queen, uh, and after something like knight to c3, this doesn't help you. Queen captures on c3 uh, wins immediately for black. So you can't block with the knight, you have to play something like king to d2, uh, and now bishop to b4 check, king e2, and now f3, and whatever you do, you're getting check checkmated. Uh, if you play king captures on f2, then queen to g3, uh, this is checkmate, uh, and if you capture maybe the pawn on f3, uh, then again queen to g3 check, king e2, and uh, queen to e3, this is again checkmate. So, uh, a very hard position for Giri indeed. After knight e to d3 check, uh, Giri played uh, probably, I mean, okay, he played the strongest move, but it doesn't help. Uh, king to d2, and now Maxim plays knight captures on e1. Uh, Giri captures the knight on f2, queen captures on, g on, on f2, and now d3. Opening up a discovered attack from the bishop to the queen on f2, and there is really nothing for white to hope for here, it's a completely lost position. Uh, Giri tries queen captures on e1, uh, but now comes bishop to e3 check. And in this position, Anish Giri resigned the game, as it doesn't really matter what he does. Uh, if you play something like uh, king king to d1, then of course queen captures on c2 is checkmate. Uh, if you play uh, king captures on d3, then queen to c4 is checkmate. And uh, lastly, if you, if you capture the queen and hope for the best, then queen captures on c2 with check king e1 and f captures on e3 again you're getting checkmated so nothing really nothing really for giri to do in this position uh, after bishop to e3 check giri resigned the game and you know that that's probably what he got uh, for not going for that g5 and uh, draw by repetition uh, but nevertheless uh, a wonderful game by maxim vachier lagrave a 28 move uh, brilliancy if i might say so uh, you know, really, really enjoy watching his games uh, in, in the Sicilian, because, you know, he, he really is an expert. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, once again, I am really interested. What do you think? Uh, is, uh, is Vladimir Kramnik a justified decision uh, by the organizers? Or maybe maybe you would prefer to see Maxim Vachier Lagrave uh, being given a chance, uh, chance for the title? Uh, and uh, aside from that, uh, who do you think uh, has the most chances to win the candidates? So yeah, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.